Good morning. It's good to see you again. I am back home and eager to talk to you and get back to a routine and a schedule. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Iliopolis Christian Church and the Nyanic Christian Church. I'm also the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries. This is an outreach project for those who are spiritual but not religious or who are faith-based but don't have a church home. And I'm the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast, where we encourage people to lean into the difficult and uncomfortable spaces in their lives so that you can overcome it. Today is Monday, September 12th, which means yesterday was Sunday, September 11th. And that date will always be meaningful for us here in the United States. And I want to talk about that a little bit. There are a lot of emotions that come up with September 11th, and I'm still kind of feeling a lot of them myself this morning. Also yesterday, in feeling all of those emotions, I came home from worship with two amazing faith communities, and I saw coverage of the Queen, who has recently passed, the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, recently passed, and they were transporting her to, about to Scotland yesterday. And I got to tell you, I had a bit of an ugly cry. All of the emotions just came to the surface, and I had a few minutes to just process all of those, to get those out of my system. And that's how I do it. I ugly cry for a little bit. Maybe you do too. Can you identify with that? Or, guys, I don't think you ugly cry so much. Maybe you have your other coping mechanisms to deal with those things, but... Anyway, I had a bit of an ugly cry, and I felt so much better. We have to process those difficult emotions when they come to us. And yesterday's emotions were uh, on a societal level, remembering September 11th and honoring this queen who was never my queen, but I so admired her life of service and what she inspired and modeled for people. So sometimes those hard-hitting emotions come in other forms. They can come in grief or failure or vulnerability or any number of way. We can experience some hard-hitting emotions. And I want to talk a little bit this morning about how faith and some good practices can help us process and grow from those moments. First of all, let's talk about faith. Faith gives us a grounding in this world and an, a hope that surpasses this day and time. Faith is vital. And obviously, I'm a proponent of faith. Many of you may not be or view it differently. And I know some of you have practiced faith much longer than I have and have so much more wisdom to share on this than I do. But faith for me is so vital as a foundation upon which to build a life. And if you're not religious, but you're spiritual, I invite you to embrace those spiritual practices and beliefs that elevate you and ground you in your being. And not only those beliefs, but the practices that come along with those, those spiritual practices. We are all spiritual people. We are embodied spirits in this earth and our spiritual health is so important. So do those spiritual practices. Pray, meditate, take a hike, whatever it is for you that empowers you and allows you to engage with God, higher power, spirit, however you name that presence, do those practices. That is the most vital thing that we can have in our lives that will ground us and give us courage and strength to process these hard-hitting emotions. Once we have that practice, there are some other actions we can take when these emotions hit. The first is take a small step. Do one thing. Do one thing that can help you feel better. And it may be that you're powerless to change the situation. You may not have an action you can take to improve or heal from the situation. That's okay. Clean off a table clean out a closet, uh, go on a 10-minute walk, 
call a friend, but do one thing, take one action that can help you. When you take one action and do one thing, then you get a little confidence, you get a little momentum, and you get a little energy from that. So that's the first, take one small step. The second is use grounding techniques. You know, we talked about how spiritual practices and beliefs ground us in this life and also give us hope for beyond this life and what we can see and hear and taste and feel. But it is also important to be completely present in this moment. So take, use some grounding techniques and use the 54321 method for this. What's that, you ask? Well, take a moment and name five things you can see right now. Start with your eyes. What are five things you can see? And then what are four things that you can hear? What are three textures you can touch? What are two things that you can smell? And what is one thing you can drink? Hopefully water, something healthy, something nutritious. But use the 54321 method to engage your senses to be fully present in the moment. That helps you to stay grounded and keep your mind from wandering what could go wrong in the future, what shoe might drop. We need to just stay present to the moment. And that 54321 method can help us to be grounded in this moment and to the world around us. So third, listen to your heart or your gut, but listen to that voice within. Do you remember Elijah after his battle, his showdown with the prophets of Baal and King Ahab and Queen Jezebel promised that he would have a very cruel ending to his life? Well, he, fl he fled, obviously and he went and hid in the mountains, and he needed God so much. He wanted to just end his life. He was so panicked, he was so afraid. But what he did ultimately is he found rest for his body. He ate good food to nurture his soul, and he was quiet and listened. He listened and heard that still small voice from within. That's where God, where higher power, where spirit speaks to us from, from that small voice within. And to access that, to hear that, we need to be silent. We need to just be quiet. Sometimes writing out in a journal, writing out our feelings and our thoughts can help us to be in a place where we can hear that voice better. So the third thing is just listen to that voice within. And then the last one, take some time. Take some time. Things don't resolve immediately. If you break an ankle, you're going to have active healing and passive healing. You're going to go to the doctor and get a cast put on. That's the active part. But then the passive part is you're going to need some time to let it heal. Just because the doctor put the cast on doesn't mean you can go out and run a marathon. You have to rest it. You have to give it space and time to heal. The same is true with emotional wounds too. When we have unfinished emotional business, we have an active role and a passive role in healing those. The active part, do you need to have a conversation with someone? Do you need to do some inner work of forgiveness? What is it that you need to do in order to resolve this and then you need to give it time and you need to give it space to heal so just to recap ensure that you're engaging in your spiritual practices take the time to pray and meditate each day i had a professor in seminary who said it is vital every single day to spend 30 minutes in centering prayer except when your life is out of control, when it's so busy, so spinning crazy around you. And in those days, take an hour. <laughs> in other words, 
the most important and vital thing we can do for ourselves is to take time to just engage in those meditative, prayerful, spiritual practices. If you need help with that, reach out. I can help you find a practice that will work for you because we don't all do that the same way. So that's the foundation. And then in the moment, there are actions we can take. You know, take a small step, do one thing. Use the grounding techniques. This is the five, four, three, two, one method. Listen to your heart and take some time. So I hope this is a benefit for you the next time you have hard hitting emotions. Try some of these, and if you need a recap of what they are, it's on the Spirit Health blog at lightlifeandloveministries.com, and I'll link that in the comments. But in the meantime, my hope for you this week is that you will re-engage or re-engage with your spiritual practices and ignite those beliefs that you have so that you can have that solid foundation so that when these hard-hitting times come, you will be in a place where you can take these steps and heal and resolve them. I want you to have a full life, a filled life. And if you want some help and support in doing that, reach out to me. My name is Melissa Ebkin, and that's my hope and wish for you, friends. Live a filled life. See you next week.